is it? I'm, I'm sitting, sitting here with Stuart Wood. Welcome, welcome to Stuart. Good morning, morning. Welcome, welcome to our breakfast TV. TV. This is amazing, uh, isn't it? Set, isn't it? Brilliant. Yeah. It's, uh, you you it's, borrowed it from Eamon and Ruth, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, Eamon yeah. and yeah. Ruth. Yeah, quite yeah, possibly. At least it wasn't... Uh, at, least, at least I'm uh, current. <laughs> least, at least it's not other than that, that uh, shouty one that does the yeah, ITV yeah. television. Ah, who does yes. lots of streaming mm. shouting and doesn't let anybody talk. So I'm here to let you talk. Yes. And we're going to talk today about your business, your work, and everything that's kind of led up to where you are now. Mm, mm. Uh, and we're going to cover three particular subjects, one of which is your work with celebrities and, yeah. uh, and the stuff that you do with um, the, the television magazines, etc. Yeah. We're going to cover the work that you've done with charities, and in particular with the work for the D-Day book that we did together, yeah. 6644, the, that uh, really exciting project that we worked on for some time. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about your life in weddings. Mm. Because I know you've made a you know a kind of huge shift from where you were early days to where yeah, you are now, and I, and I want to share your story because it's a really exciting story of what you've done and how you've moved from where you were to where you are now in your in your wedding business with some brilliant stories. Um, so welcome, good morning, Stuart. Morning, yes, yeah. So, where do we start then? Right at the very beginning. Let's, let's start with celebrities. Before All right, yeah. So, how did you get into shooting the celebrities? Well? Okay. We're going to show some of your photos in a minute. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I started, when I was at college, I thought I was going to be a, a, an advertising photographer, pack shots, et cetera, et cetera. That wasn't going very well at all. I was having a very frustrated time of it. And good teaching uh, here, the lecturers got together and took me to one side and said, no wonder you're having a frustrating time of it. This isn't you, you know. You are a people photographer. We send you into places, uh, and you, you're the guy that gets into places others don't get to, get people to do things others. And, and I said, well, I always love photographing people. And, and as you know, if I've got a fire in my belly, I really go for it. Got isn't, isn't that really nice, though, that the, the lecturers then saw and helped you to understand. Absolutely. It. That to me is what really good teachers are. Absolutely. Not the ones mm. who sit there kind of spouting yeah. what they're told to by the government yeah. someday, yeah. but actually individually mm. understand you. Yeah. Well, this, this is, is the, the person, person that he's going to be. This, this is what we need him. You know, he, he needs, needs to pre- you know, make this happen, happen. and yeah. yeah. move you away, away from the path that you want. I think great, great lecturers can do that. And, uh, that, that, that for me, that's, that's a very exciting part of your journey, for sure. Exactly, and, and like you said, move me in a different direction, uh, and, and my life did go in a different direction. So when I realised people was my thing, I kind of knew anyway. I always loved taking pictures of people. Uh, I really sort of went for it, and thinking uh, uh, the thing that you've got going as a student, people feel sorry for you. You've got no money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You've always got enough for a pint. We know that. <laughs> but, several pints. Yeah, or several pints. Yeah. So uh, I then thought, how can I? Uh, uh, make the best of this uh, situation and I've always been pretty good at that actually still am I suppose you know uh, and, and so I wrote to, uh, over the last year and a half I wrote to 250 celebrities and I got 25 of them and it was like so this was the last year and a half of your, of your, yeah. your work at college at college yeah it just took over completely and they didn't mind because they just said we used to because sometimes I didn't even do some of the projects because I was that busy on my own project and so we used to go in and say we have to mark you down on this, but don't worry, we're not worried about you. We know you're going to be all right on the, on the other side of this anyway, you know. So, but I used to throw myself in at the deep end, uh, and it frightens, uh, uh, frightens me to death when I think of, uh, I just turn it with one camera, no reflector, just me. The sense of youth. Exactly, you know, yeah. You're <laughs> not afraid of anything, no, just get out there no. and do it. Now, now there's a car full of this and back up that and assistance and all the rest of it. Um, so, yeah, so that was great teaching, and, and, and I got so much experience under my belt. Uh, and, and then I always remember uh, 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 Country Living magazine, the then editor came down, and we were under, on pain of death to, to be at her lecture, because you can imagine, like, uh, students, oh, I'm not turning up today, whatever, whatever, you have to be at this lecture, uh, you see. So there was three years of, of students there, um, and I was obviously there. And then she said, I want to see work afterwards. But <laughs> this, is student, this is students for you. And guys, you know, go and get drunk or whatever, yeah, but, but put the work in as well, for goodness sake. Because out of three years, only two students went up to her, and I was one of them, you see. And then all these pictures fell out, and she said, have you taken these? And yeah. Wow. Come and see my picture editor. Never slept the night before. Uh, that, that kind of nervous. Went down. And, a, and, and this really does my heading when I think about it now. Because as a student, I was being commissioned by a national magazine to do articles for them. Wow. What yeah. Fortune follows the brain. Well, exactly. Th- th- throw yourself in at the deep end and test yourself, you know, and see what you've got. The worst that the people can do is say no. 
And exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, you can always say you tried. And, and as you know, Mark, the saying, because because of all the years of experience I've got now, you realize you haven't got the same amount of time again. So that sounds going through that hourglass now, you know, I'm even more fearless, as you know. So so I, I couldn't care less now. Uh, obviously, still very professional, I hope, but I'll just go for anything and everything here. So so that was uh, so I left college. Uh, oh, and then I also with with that uh, project, I won. Uh, student Photographer of the Year at the Photographer's Gallery in London, which is a big wow, thing as well. That's a really big, big thing yeah. to have. So, Still got the trophy. No one's been to the Photographer's Academy. If you come into London, it's an awesome place that always has some fantastic, different, specific shows on the bit. When, of course, we can get out again. Mm -hmm. to get out. I just point out that we are all COVID safe here. We've got our separation and everyone else is wearing their masks in the building. Um, but to, yeah, get to the photographer's uh, gallery if you can. It's a brilliant place to go to yeah. for inspiration. Yeah. No, absolutely, yeah. And then it was years. Uh, then I'd always done weddings, always loved them, but I didn't like the fact that uh, there was no creativity there. It was all, and, and to get myself through as a student I'd sometimes do a two on a Saturday you know for cash in hand get me through and all that um, and uh, but I didn't like there was no creativity I know we're going to get on to when is later on but it was 10 years or more ago when I saw the stuff coming from mostly from our Australian friends of course you know Yervin and thinking Yerv and Jerry gods absolute gods yeah that's Yervin Zandangan um, a hero in many people's eyes now focused very much on his business in Australia because obviously he can't travel but so many people have learned and from the urban uh, absolutely years, and he, yeah. he changed a lot of the world and so too did jerry jonas who's going to be joining us later on today changed the world of, of wedding photography mm -hmm. for sure yeah, well, I think it was 11 years ago, uh, uh, Jeremy, was the event uh, thing in London where I met you for the first time. That was <laughs> Society of London. Well, that was it, yeah. Was yeah, that's right. So, so uh, yeah, and I always remember, I know we're digressing slightly, but you know this is going to happen with me anyway. Uh, I went on a Nick Jonas. I know, I know. <laughs> for one question. <laughs> that would be one question for me. Uh, I went on a Nick Jonas course with Adam, Adam Alex. I think that was Martin, not you on that one. Um, and, and we were, were at uh, nine o'clock in the morning and Nick said, of course, there's no questions. And I went, yeah. And he went, really? But nothing's happened yet. And I said, no, I've got a great question for you. Why are you Aussies so bloody good? You know? and, and he said, one word, Yervant. Uh, and he said, uh, Yervant came along, raised the bar. And then we've all had to do that, which, which absolutely underlined another thing that I want to get across. Competition is brilliant. Don't knock it. You know, we all get a little now and again. You go oh, and that, then you see, blimey, look at what she's done. He's done. Yeah. Got to pull my socks up. That's good. That's good. So don't knock competition. Well, we, 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 we ran a competition yesterday. It was just a fun thing, really. But we had hundreds of entries suddenly came and that's going to be judged. Oh, it's been judged already and the top 10 are going to be live critiques later on today. Mm. With that when they're announced as well. So mm. make sure you tune in for that because that's going to be fun too. Yeah. We've chosen judges from different mindsets of photography as well. Mm. And, and that's what's going to be fun. So the judges are going to be having those conversations. Anyway, mm. let's get to the Yes, judges. right. So where are we now? So, yes, yeah, so so it was, uh, you know, uh, out of college. All of a sudden you leave college and you've got no facilities there uh, uh, because they've all gone now. But uh, I was like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always been Derby based. Um, so I'm sort of halfway everywhere, and that's helped my career uh, th uh, down the years. But I'd be on the train five o'clock in the morning, twice a week, going to see the magazines and telling people. And then they give you a little job, and then you do your best and, and do a little bit more. Always give them extra, you know, more than what uh, they ask for. And all of a sudden, you get a medium job, and then all of a sudden, you get thrown in at the deep end. You know, and my big break was uh, Pre uh, Pre Prejudice, the Colin Firth, right. Jennifer Ely thing. Now they were uh, Colin Firth and Jennifer Ely. Brilliant. Yes. Uh, so, so we, um, we're going we're gonna to show some slides of some of the pictures shortly as well, um, and we're going we're to actually show some of the more current, more recent ones at all. Yes. Yeah. Well. Absolutely. Because um, I know we, you know, I know we've got time, but I want to, I want us to be able mm. to cover all the bases. There's some really important things there. Yeah. So, what was your first big break? big one that was the big job. That was probably it, because I know, I know that since uh, it was a very difficult one to go on uh, with photographers. Um, uh, it's a BBC production and back in the day they were, they, it could be quite difficult um, going on that. I blagged my way onto, uh, onto the TV sets because they said, you've done TV? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> so but it's like, the best I know. Well it's, well, it's like an equity card. You can't get it in, until you, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Uh, so on I went. Uh, and then I found out that I think they sent two or three other photographers before me who got absolutely zilch, you know. But I stuck with it two days, and I got the main this picture. This is a BBC production of Pride and Prejudice mm. that 
they, the BBC have asked you to go and photograph. Yes, yeah, commission me. Times or, yeah. Or, or, or whatever. So, and you still can't, they still can't get onto the set. That's amazing. There's a lot of politics on, on the uh, TV drama, I tell you. It's ease I've seen over the years. Uh, but, yeah, uh, as, uh, put, let me put it this way, being diplomatic, as, as the, uh, which I'm not very often, but, uh, but I have to be in this case, because don't bite the hand that feeds and all that. But as a photographer on television, uh, you are never the priority. And you have to learn that. And, and, you have to, and, and this is difficult with me, but you have to let things go sometimes and keep your mouth shut. Never make any enemies. You never know when you need a feed for a light from the sparks. You never know when you need a makeup girl quick, you know, or costume to whatever, whatever. So you keep your mouth shut. And exactly friends with everybody. And, and uh, so I got this picture. And then, of course, it was the main picture for uh, uh, the Pride and Prejudice of, of Colin Firth, Jennifer Ely. Um, and that did me a lot of good because that would fall out on the portfolio. I mean, it's long since been replaced, obviously. Uh, but I t I'd go to whatever magazine and that would fall out and they go, you took that picture because it's like a really famous one, you know. So that was a, a big break and it sort of knocked me up. And it also, uh, I got the reputation of, you can send Stuart on there. He'll take all that you know what and he'll get on with it and he'll come away with something, you know. And, so let's, let's have a look at this. Look yeah, sure. Sure. I'm going to share now. Um, through uh, the team in Italy. Hopefully they're going to they're going to run that live picture. Have you got those pictures up, Charlie? Can you run the run the Zoom link? Yeah, brilliant. So the first one we've got here, as you can see, is the fabulous Joanna Lumley in Red Square um, <laughs> yeah. behind the, 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 the big church that's, uh, that's yeah. there. Um, Some basils. How did, how did you find? How did you find? You know her as an actress and well, I know you've got some special stories yeah she's brilliant to work with first of all she's absolutely I mean you know she comes across lovely on the you know when you see her on television and she is she's amazing so helpful very very professional so uh, really easy to work with you know and me and her connected uh, straight away uh, and and uh, of course uh, so I I was flown in uh, this was for the Trans-Siberian uh, German Alumnus Trans Siberian uh, Railway Adventure, whatever. They started in Hong Kong, I think, and then ended up uh, in Moscow. Now, the idea was to fly me in uh, to meet them on the train as she was getting off the train. Uh, and uh, But of course, photography is like the last thing they think about uh, a lot of the time. Uh, so uh, they said, Look, Stuart, we're, we're too late to get a business visa now. Oh, so you're going to have to go in as a tourist. So go under, in under the radar and all this. Yeah, and, and so on. So, which I did um, and, and got in there. And uh, luckily, uh, they got all the passes and the um, permits to shoot on Red Square. So obviously, when I'm with them, uh, the security just thought I was with them, which I was, you know, so, so that didn't matter. Uh, so uh, anyway, that was the first day. And uh, I had arranged to pick up my Ellen Crom light uh, to shoot the stuff in Red Square. And it's the other side of Moscow. And I don't know if you've been to Moscow, but the traffic just doesn't move, does it? So I'm in this... Um, um, a taxi with this Armenian taxi driver who kind of took me uh, under his wing and, and one of the yellow taxis because some a, of them I found yeah. that you, can, you get if you go into the airport and get in the yellow taxi, or, yeah. they will rape you. <laughs> just like, I got that straight away. No, of course, but they'll, yeah, they'll charge I got that. Fortunes. Mate, I got that straight away. I'm the guy that goes like, no one's having a take me for a ride. <laughs> I got there at four o'clock in the morning, thinking, get away, because you haven't got your proper thing, you know, yeah. and got and got charged about hundred quid for a twenty yeah. quid journey. Yeah. So no, no, this was like more of a private one, and we're trying to get across, and I'm thinking it's December now. Um, and we've got this opportunity of shooting Joanna Lumley in Red Square, uh, and I haven't got the light because it's the other side, and and it's not moving. And I'm and, and anyway, this Armenian tactic. I was actually the lo lovely thing is I was telling Joanna Lumley this story there, and she said, Stuart, for darling, forget the pictures because this story is amazing, and it's one of those kind of adventures you get, uh, uh, or I seem to get, you know, uh, 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 when you're abroad. Uh, and while we were in the at traffic jam, the Armenian taxi driver gave me his lunch that his wife had cooked for him, oh, you know? Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh no, it's not something like sheep's eyes or anything like that, is it? You know? <laughs> but through my translator, my assistant Yogi goes, uh, you've got to eat it, Stuart, or you'll, you'll really offend him. And it, but it was beautiful. It was like half a bread, you know, like a round bread cut in half. And it was, it was uh, uh, beef cooked in butter. Uh, and it was absolutely gorgeous. And then uh, Yorgi says, you're going to have to give me something back. I said, yeah, I'll tip him. We'll know that I'll offend him. I'm thinking, oh, great. You know, and this guy's like, uh, you know, like mountain. Uh, anyway, at, at the time, if you remember, I used to shoot my kids at Christmas and put them on my Christmas card. So I've got this yeah. Christmas card with my cute kids on. We, t we ended 
that we managed to get the light. I'm stressed out. So I'm thinking, it's December, we're going to lose the light in the afternoon, and that's the only chance we get it shooting at Red Square because of the permit. So I'm thinking, oh, what are we going to do? Uh, we get to the Hotel International, which is like right opposite Red Square where we're staying. The, the, the taxi driver gets out, and I pay him, and I give him a tip, and then Yogi says, what have you got for him? I give him the card, and you can see this guy completely confused. Can't speak a word of English, Yogi's translating. But you actually see this guy's heart yeah, melt yeah. When, when he's like looking at these two cute kids, and then you can see his heart melt. And then he hugs me, oh, and nearly crushes me to death. Sh and, and then he, put, he, he gets his uh, wallet out, puts it very carefully in, so he, and, then put, and then against his heart, and he did this. And I'm telling Joanna Lummer this in Red Skirt. She's going, darling, this is wonderful. I said, isn't it good? So I bet you, even to this day, because that was December 2014, uh, I bet you in a, in a flat in Moscow somewhere, that card is tied a plate on the shelf, you know. So great story. That's so nice. So we're going um, to break the commercial in a minute, but uh, if, if people haven't... Uh, oh, I thought we were breaking the commercial before. Um, um, in the, that's one of the, the, the uh, underground stations. Yes. No, because I did yeah. a tour of the underground Fabulous. stations. Fabulous. Yeah, they're like cathedrals, uh, aren't they? And then it's just insanely, insanely beautiful. It's just yeah. a fantastic place. The, you know, and especially when you're travelling around at night time, because otherwise there's so many people there. It's hard to take off. Yeah, but yeah. It is just... Some of, some of the most amazing architecture if you ever has the opportunity to go to Moscow. Absolutely. You've got to get around the stations. And the people are great as well. I love the people. Yeah. So we're um, we're going to we're going to move on because obviously we're, we you know we, we do have limited time. Yeah. Um, you know all these amazing shots uh, in different parts of Moscow. Um, that's the university, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, yeah. One of the Seven Sisters. That's right. Stalin's Seven Sisters. Yeah. Stalin built to uh, to show America how good. And they make perfect platforms for weapons. Look, they're, so they're strategically placed yeah. so that if need be. So they're very practical they're, people. They're, they're yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a great place. Um, so, but Radio Times ah. and covers and things like mm. that. You, you've got. You, I know you, you've managed to get a few of those. And yes. And you still have your very first one that you got. That's uh, right. Actually, on the wall at your home. Absolutely. You promised yourself you'd get one. Didn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Radio Times was cover was always a thing that I wanted when I was at college and everything. And and what is it with what is it with life that um, it always keeps whatever you need just slightly out of reach, you know? Um, so I, I managed to get just about every cover that you can think of um, and uh, accept the one I wanted. Right. So, um, so that was... That, that, one, that was the first one there. So I said, I said to Liz, um, my good lady wife, uh, right, I pointed to the kitchen wall, I'm going to get it, and it's going to go there, or I die, whichever happens first. Okay. You got the insurance. Now. <laughs> Check my life insurance, yeah. And uh, anyway, we got it, and there it is, big and brash now, and it'll never move because that was the first one. Actually, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I know you've had lots since, and obviously you're working with uh, so many different areas and charities and yeah. things like that. We're going to come on to that in a second. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, just just amazing to see so many amazing covers that you've got. You, you know, when you when you look back on it, you must be really uh, excited. No, I, I am. I yeah and i never lose that actually and, and and you know the passion i've got now and i can't help it i know it's the irish in me and all that but but my emotions come out and i'm i'm, I'm more fired up now than i ever have been so uh, you've done bands this yes was a swedish band is it, that was a swedish band they flew me out to uh, bulgaria right. for that yeah uh, so that's a, a se their second city called plovdiv um, and that's a Roman amphitheatre. We we yeah. shot that out there. I've got, there's a really there's a really interesting story actually. Can I tell you? I know it's a little bit. You can. Yeah. Let's go to watch our time. I know. Right. It was my anniversary. I've got to tell you this. It's great. This my, it was my anniversary, and I flew out, uh, and and I. I I met Izzy, the female journalist, the writer uh, at Heathrow. We went to, I think, Stuttgart, picked the band up, and then we flew out to Bulgaria. Uh, now, when we, after this incredible journey, it seemed like to go on forever in this in this van that they got. We were with the band, and they were cracking the beer straight away. It was great, uh, uh, but we got to the hotel, and there was uh, something wrong with the hotel. You know, double booked, etc. So they said they came up to us and said, "Can you share uh, a room for the night?" You see, uh, you and Izzy. And I said, well, I just met her, you know. Uh, so, uh, so I said, yeah, okay, as long as one night. And there, there are twin beds, aren't they? Uh, not double beds yet, that's fine. So I sent this text back to Liz. Happy anniversary, darling. I'm sleeping with another woman tonight. Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Um, so my sound is probably not, not as good as it needs to be. So I'm going to I'm going to pick up my voice a little bit so they can hear it a little bit more. So you don't um, have that problem with me, really, do you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so great band shops. Yeah. Uh, excited to do something a little bit different again. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. And Look at that. Mm. Amazing place to be. It's, yeah. Uh, and you can see the amphitheatre. They have built everything in the yeah. middle. It's just you know I bet that was a you know again that difference between what you do giving you that excitement every time. Yeah. Uh, honestly, if, strangely enough, Jeremy. If you just go back to that one very quick, the amphitheatre one. There are times when you know you, you you press the thing on the back of your camera and see the picture, and there are times when you when you say to yourself, "I've got a damn good job, aren't I?" Or words to that effect. And and I remember saying it out loud yeah. at that moment when I, I saw that, that and I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. "Wow, what a job I've got!" Yeah, I'm yeah. being paid to do this. Exactly, thing. flown out to do yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. And then TV series. Yeah, yeah, dramas. You know, dramas yeah. and uh, and multiple different dramas that you've done. Um, you know, great to Ooh. see. Look at that one. There, there's me. You're on the set. You're part, part of yeah. the part, part yeah. of the, And, part and of you know, the, they, they wrote me in on that and then cut me. Oh, how dare they? So you were an so, extra in there, were you? Yeah. Oh, Hollywood brilliant. beckoned and they cut me. What happened was, uh, uh, the, the guy, uh, I can't, Mark Addy, uh, obviously on that side, and I had to have a picture like this, obviously, and the lady, uh, forgive me, but I've forgotten her name, that actress, they were doing this scene in the garden, and the, and the husband was supposed to be in the greenhouse at the back just pottering around you see so they got this extra uh, and and uh, I, I could see the direct paul uh, i've worked with loads and all the sheridan St smith stuff i've done with paul uh, and the producer looking at me i felt like i was at school like, what, what, have I done? what have i done now you know and they said uh, have you ever been an extra and i went it looks like i'm going to be a guy doesn't did, it you did know? you get your equity card as well yeah. <laughs> so so they thought i looked more like a husband than the guy that, uh, you know. Uh, so anyway, but here's the interesting thing. Um, uh, so, and I took it seriously. I had a bit of a laugh to start with, but then took it seriously. And, and Paul said, you, you, you're doing really good. I said, mate, I'm going to do my best for you, you know. But look at the co colour coordination on the yeah, clothes. Yeah. You know, like, you, I know you get it, but you, you see films like Lord of the Rings that have a certain cast to them. Yeah. And, and yeah, they'll do that in post, but they'll start with the costumes, Everything you see. Sure look at that. that. Yeah. All, the, all those colours coordinate. Yeah. And I, I was just a guy in the greenhouse that didn't make it in there and they've got cutting room floor or whatever the digital version of that is um, they don't get bits of the film anymore no, you know, you do the cutting room floor but yeah here's me look yeah, so, but, which is a shame but great director oh, then, please tell me that it wasn't where you ended up in there <laughs> <laughs> she didn't bury you in the garden did she? no 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 that's burning the evidence oh, as, right, as, uh, okay. as right. apparently they did it's the jeremy bamba case now that you can tell oh, that's uh, right yeah. Yeah. yeah you can tell that's actually live because look at uh, uh, stephen graham's yeah. neck and the veins on his neck <laughs> as he's shouting at him, you know yeah. so that's when your silent cameras come in obviously mm. yeah and again uh, you know you get your scenes, get, getting everything within that so exactly yeah. I've got my Fuji mirrorless a little bit of the plug there at Nathan um, and uh, they uh, I can shoot during the action of course and you see because yeah. it's completely silent yeah yeah <clears throat> um, so that's that's through your world of celebrities we're going to switch over to uh, to a different uh, different set of uh, set of slides now because I want to talk to you about your, your the book that we did with D-Day. Yep. So um, give me one second. So I'm just going to yep. change this screen over uh, because it's a really important one uh, for us to see. And uh, so I'm going to just swatch over to this one now. Yeah. Well, you know that I was saying, if you had to run into your burning house, yeah. you know, that's what I, this is what I pick up. That's what I pick up. I am more proud of this than I can so put into words. So 6640 yeah. was a project that you did yeah. um, for, to commemorate the D-Day uh, uh, um, landing. So yep. um, I know you spent, was it nearly two years? Five years. Five years. Five, five years total. doing this, yeah. Wow. Mm. Um, and uh, the culmination was a book that had uh, people that were still around, some many sadly gone now, yeah. um, who were there involved with that uh, with that. With that, that momentous day yeah um, and that was still around and could tell a little bit of their story and and if you want to just open the book there and we'll, yeah, show, sure. we'll show a little bit about it it's a book that was done for charity are we and all, and, oh, right. and, all, and all the profits are going to go to um or have have been and are, yeah. are going to the uh, the british legion yeah absolutely um, so, so I got this crazy idea. I have a lot of crazy ideas, uh, but here's here's the other here's the other tip. Just do them while you, while we're here, because uh, eventually I realised five years before the 75th anniversary of D-Day that I'm running out of time. 
because um, these guys are in the 90s now. So I spent the time in between um, commissions, yeah. traveling around uh, the length and breadth of the country, north to south, everywhere in between, and even a week in Normandy during, uh, not, I can't remember what year it was now, uh, 2017 celebrations. Uh, uh, so I, I got a few in Normandy as well. It was a privilege to spend a week with them there, uh, photographing these guys and ladies. I'm, I haven't found a lady yet, but there's ladies so in there. toward the front of the book. Well, there's about four or five in there, actually. One that's but, uh, just the front. <laughs> it's t typical, isn't it, Carl? But there are, <laughs> there are ladies in there. Yeah. Um, because it's important to show that, um, you know, it wasn't just uh, the guys running up the beach, God bless them, uh, that... Uh, um, that the D-Day was about. Uh, so, and I wanted to capture these stories forever. Uh, and, and, and as you know, this has now been uh, uh, something unexpected. This has now been accessioned to the National Library, the British Library, well, you know, permanently. You, 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 know? you, you had the British Library in there. You actually launched it at the National Memorial Arboretum, didn't you, up in North yes. yeah. Um And in addition to that, the uh, Four Seasons in the city of London yeah. gave you um, their beautiful, uh, beautiful room to uh, to do an exhibition and uh, and a, and a ra fundraising uh, uh, evening too, and uh, we're privileged to be a part of that. So, Absolutely, um, yeah. It's yeah. a fantastic book. There are yeah. still copies of the book available, uh, and if you want to um, if you want to contact Stuart or myself, we can uh, we can get copies of the book available for you. There we go. I so found one of the ladies. The at last. There's four or five in there, but I couldn't find any. There we go. So, I mean. Talk about history, Jeremy. I mean, she was an operating officer, fighter command for D-Day and the Battle of Britain. Right, you know, she right. was in the room when those, when the day we so almost nearly went under in the Battle of Britain. Let's have a look at a closer look at some of the yeah. uh, some of some of the slides so that people can see them. And uh, very important before I forget as well, a, a massive uh, thank you to you, good people at Graphic Studio, for making this book. Uh, and, and doing a fabulous job, this handmade book here to you, uh, Oris, obviously Dario and Tulio, for the support you gave me here. So, uh, well, it, it, um, much yeah, appreciated. We can see closely now, if they want to share the screen again, so you can see close up of some of the, some of the pictures, mm. um, and you'll be able to see uh, a little bit more detail of the individuals that, uh, that you tracked down, found, and, and actually managed to photograph. Yeah. Um, really exciting project yeah. and we were, we were really proud to be a part of that so thank it, you it that. was well thank you but it was it was something lovely that uh, obviously we got lots of sponsors on board and, and there was no trouble getting them because they just said when they heard about what it was and what it was for it's just like let's do it you know so so it was great yeah so now we're, now we're going to turn to weddings right because obviously um so weddings weddings are something this, that this hour's going quick isn't it <laughs> <laughs> oh yes yeah, yeah on the last going, section very, already hours going very quickly so we're just gonna we're just gonna um, just we're just gonna go to weddings uh, because for me this is obviously how we first met. Yeah. Um, this is how we first met. We've apparently got uh, three minutes to to um, to share about the weddings. Uh, it probably was the uh, the early part of the the story that uh, that we. Um, that we used all our time up, but, uh, but let's get into the wedding. You <laughs> the weddings, were yeah. very much involved in, um, you were very much involved in local weddings. You know, you yeah. did travel, but it was still yeah. that, the kind of yeah. local weddings, the typical, ordinary, everyday, you know, great stuff that we get to the privilege of doing lots of wedding albums for. Mm. Um, but you made a conscious decision. You wanted to move into the higher market. Yeah. Why was that? Uh, uh, I, well, I saw the rewards okay. <laughs> and thinking, uh, I've, I've spent all these years uh, having a wonderful time. Uh, now it's time to sort of, you know, reap the benefits, really. Yeah. So from a practical view, uh, I could see what, uh, you know, the guys uh, uh, earn at that level if you get there. And also, as like I say, it was like this kind of uh, road to Damascus moment when I saw this stuff from Jerry and from Yvant and, and, and the like, you know, and it was like, this is what I, because I could see that I was, this is the photographer that I was, yeah. the connection with the people, uh, in the, you know, get, getting all the, the posing right and, and, and all that, which are done for the magazines and television, uh, working under pressure. Uh, also, my kind of USP that's sort of notched me up as well is, is working quick, working under pressure, uh, and uh, the connection with the people. But also, having shot at the, you know, the magazine covers, 
uh, I had to know how to like men and women differently. Okay. And I could bring that to the weddings as well. So, so all those things. Hold that thought. We're mm. going to break for a minute. We're just going to talk a little bit behind the scenes about the original wedding book. So I know Dario's going to do a little talk now. And we'll be yeah. back and we'll carry on with that in just a few seconds. Sure.